Hey, 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 slackers. Welcome back. This is video lesson 16. Okay. Um, we're going to do a little review problem. We're going to go over the homework that was due for Wednesday this week, which was 7 through 12. And then we'll do a couple more examples and give you a new homework from a new handout. Okay. Um, real quick, I want to talk to you about something because I don't know if I did in this class. Okay. So seniors. There are a few seniors in this class that this applies to. I feel terrible that you are stuck in the situation that you're in with graduation and prom and awards night and scholarship night and all that jazz. It's completely unfair. Excuse me. Some of you were going to play your last seasons of sports for high school, seniors in high school, and you didn't get to. And it's a pretty disappointing year for, for you guys. Um, I want to explain to you that this whole pandemic, this whole health crisis, this whole coronavirus, COVID-19, it sucks for everybody. You know, there's, there's every single person in the world right now, which is pretty phenomenal, statistically speaking, if you think about it, is being impacted negatively by coronavirus. You know, um, people, some people out of work, they can't pay the bills. Um, some people lost people. Some people sitting in your class lost loved ones to coronavirus. Some, some people died. Um, that's the greatest tragedy of what's happening. That's the worst case scenario, you know? And, and I hate to say that to you guys, because I get it where you're like, oh, we can't even have graduation. We can't even have prom. And I'm sitting here saying some people died. And you're like, yeah, I know, but I can't. But think about that. You're, you're sad about graduation. And there, I have students that have had two, three people in their family die. Um, I have my friend across the street. She lost two people in her family in one week. One week, two relatives died from coronavirus last week. Um, and now they're best friends in the hospital on a ventilator. It's, it's just, that's the worst case scenario, in my opinion. You have people like me having babies in the middle of this craziness. And now they're coming up with new data where children, young children, um, there's a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a teenager who have died in New York, excuse me, um, of COVID-19 complications. It seems like while they have it and after they have it, their body's responding with a severe inflammatory response. With It's called Kawasaki and um, toxic shock syndrome. It's killing them. It's killing them. Um, a seven-week-old baby died a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's, it's scary, guys. You know, and, and that's the second five-year-old, I think, that's passed. Um, there was one, a couple, the seven week old baby died. And then like a week later, a five year old died. And now we have a five year old, a seven year old and a teenager in New York with all these new symptoms. Um, so for somebody like me, who's having a baby, this is not the way you want to have a baby. This is terrible. My, our entire families are all starting to come to terms with the fact that in four weeks, it'll be four weeks this Friday, they're not going to be able to hold this baby. They're not gonna be able to meet her. They're not gonna be able to see her. Um, over my dead body, I'm not letting anybody touch this baby. <laughs> I think my husband feels the same way. Um, you know, we're just afraid the baby will get sick and die. Um, so everybody has their level of pain here. Everybody has their level of suffering. Everybody's sacrificing on some level. And it's, I'm not saying that to make you feel better, or to make you feel worse, but to put it in perspective. I think William Floyd is trying very hard to... Do right by you guys. You know, I know a curbside graduation isn't ideal, but it's something. And they're basically promising you guys that if we can, excuse me, have an outdoor graduation at a later date over the summer, they're going to. If we can have prom at a later date over the summer, they're going to. And if they can't, they're going to give you guys a reunion next year, which I think is kind of cool. I mean, you guys may not think it's cool, but a year from now, hopefully this is all over with and we have a vaccine or at least a treatment by them um to get back together after some of you have went away to college or started trade school or whatever and be like oh my god can you guys believe like a year ago from today what was going on <laughs> i mean it's kind of phenomenal in some ways that this is part of your history now this is part of your story um and then i'm gonna leave you on this one i've talked to you about 
Jimmy's grandfather, Pop, who we adore. And he, you know, my daughter, my seven-year-old, um, the day before yesterday, the day before Mother's Day. Yeah, the day before yesterday. Um, she, we went and drove past uh, Jimmy's mom's house and my grandmother's house just to drop off something and say Happy Mother's Day. We all had masks on. We stayed far away because I can't get sick at this point. Um, again, we're worried about the baby. I'm worried about anybody in the house getting sick. And now there's all new developments with how they're going to handle me going into the hospital to have the baby. But that's a whole other story for a whole other day. Um, so basically we went and um, we came home and Olivia was upset because she saw her cousins and she wants to play with them and she's not really allowed to play with them. And she said, it's not fair. How come you guys had a normal childhood and I have a childhood where I'm gonna spend years on quarantine basically. And a part of my heart broke for her because that's in her mind as a seven year old, this is her tragedy. This is her suffering. This is her sacrificing. Um, and, and it's just as bad to her as it is for you guys and I have graduation and prom. Um, and I, I said to her, Jimmy and I talked to her about her great, great grandfather, um, Pop, Jimmy's grandfather, who died when he was almost 93. Um, he died about eight years ago, May 9th. It's Saturday. Excuse me. So he would have been 101 this July, which is insane. So you're talking he lived 100 years ago. Okay. He was born in 1919, I think. Um, so yeah, he, he had the most traumatic, tragic, terrible childhood that I know. Like his father died at a work explosion in a fire when he was in like kindergarten. He had to quit school very young age and start working to help support the family because back then in the twenties and thirties, um, the man supported the family. The woman didn't work. And then his sister died very tragically a couple of years after the father and then his high school graduation gift was, well, he didn't even go to high school because he dropped out in like, I don't know, sixth grade or something like that. Um, but when he was 18, he was drafted to World War II and he went and fought in the war. And if you met him, I, I knew him for 13 out of the 21 years I've been with my husband and I love the man. He was the most happy, grateful, down to earth, loving person in the world he was just a sweetheart and when he got mad he got mad but um <laughs> it took a lot to tick him off it really really did um his childhood his how he was raised and all the tragedy and all the, and he lived through the great depression i forgot that part so basically his father died his family was dirt poor then they had the great depression for four years then his sister died and then he was drafted to the war. Like, I, I just don't know how much bad luck you can have in the first 18 years of your life. And you would never know it talking to him. But it made him the person that he was. It made him the father that he was. It made him the husband that he was. It made him the grandfather that he was. It made him a phenomenal human being. You don't realize it now. It's emotional now. But this will also shape you into the adults, the people that you're going to become. And how you're going to look back on things. Um, so try to relax. The other big thing I want to tell you is, um, we are not going to have any new instruction or assessment on canvas. The last day is June 16th. I'm due to have my baby June 15th. I'm having a C-section, so it's scheduled. So basically I spoke to Mr. Scotto, Mr. Fabian and Mr. Coleman, the administration, and I'm going to arrange it that, um, I'm not going to take maternity leave this year. So your psychotic math teacher is going to stay your math teacher for the last two weeks where normally I would have went out of school and you guys would have had a sub for the last two weeks. I'm afraid to do that because of your grades, especially with the seniors. I want to make sure I'm the one wrapping up your grades and that you guys graduate. If you need this class to graduate, that you have a graduation requirement. So with that being said, if I'm going in for a C-section Monday, June 15th, I want all your work in by June 12th, that Friday. So try to meet me halfway here on this because I'm going to have a C-section. I'm going to be hospitalized. I'm having major surgery. I'm going to have a newborn and I'm still working. I'm taking one for the team to help you guys make sure your grades are good. 
So please, 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 June 12th, June 12th, June 12th. Get everything in by June 12th. Okay. Hold on it. The baby's crying? What? I said you sound like a thing. You said please, please. Oh my God, you scared me. It realistically, it's like 1230 at night here. And I thought my husband was saying that um, the baby was crying. Okay, so. Please, please, please. Um, homework. For video lesson 16, I'm going to give you a new handout. I'll show it to you now. Okay. It's going to look like this. I want you to do one through eight for homework. One through eight. So this is homework for video lesson 16 for this video lesson. This is going to be due Friday, one through eight. Okay. So let's get started because I chewed your ears off a little bit. Um, let's do a few problems. I put out there how to download um, a free version of the graphing calculator. Um, I've showed you a couple of times uh, how to do it. It's math zero and it gives you sigma. Okay, so that does help a lot if you have a device to download it on, like a computer, a tablet, or even an iPad. Um, I don't know if you can do it on an iPhone, to be honest with you. If you can't do it, you just got to do it by hand. So I'm kind of doing it both ways. All right, so let's look at today's do now. It says the probability of students passing statistics quiz Friday is 80%. So the probability of passing is 0.8, which means the probability of failing is 0.2. If you have 27 total taking it, let's figure out the probability of 15 of them passing. So it's 27, and we're choosing that 15 pass. What's the probability of passing? Whatever, do what I want, keep what you want together. It's 0.8, and how many are gonna pass? 15 of them. And then you have to consider the failures. That's 0.2. And if 15 out of 27 pass, then 12 fail. And that's all you have to do is give me that part because most of you don't have a calculator. That at most, three of them pass. The most it could be is three of them. Okay, I'm going to put that down here. If that's the most, is that the biggest or the smallest? That's right. That's the biggest. So we're going to start with 27, choose three. Three of them pass. Probability of passing is 0.8. How many are passing? Three of them. Probability of failing is 0.2. 27 minus three is 24. Or, so you can have three of them pass. That's the biggest. Or you got to count all the way down to zero now. I can have two of them pass. Where it would be 0 0.8 to the 2, 0 0.2 to the 27 minus 2 is 25. Or I can have one of them pass. 0 0.8 to the first and 0 0.2 to the 27 minus 1 is 26. Or I can have nobody pass. That would suck where it's 0.8 to the zero and 0.2 to the all 27 fail. All right, let's try number three together. At least 22 pass. At least, so what's the least it could be? 22 of them. So that's the smallest, least is smallest. So I'm gonna start with 22 and count all the way up to 27. Oh, this is gonna suck. All right, so you ready? 27C, 22. I have 0.8 pass, and I want 22 of them to pass. 0.2 fail, 27 minus 22 is five. Now we're gonna count all the way up to 27. 27 C, 23. 0.8 pass to the 23rd. 0.2 fail, 27 minus 23 is four of them. Plus 27 C, 24. I have 0.8 pass, and I want 24 of them to pass or 0 0.2 fail, and 27 minus 24 is three. Or I'm gonna keep counting up, so that's the smallest, the least, 22, 23, 24. Let's try 25. 0 0.8 to the 25, or 0 0.2 to the 27 minus two is two. 27 minus 25 is two, plus 26 of them pass. So 0.8 to the all 26 pass, or 0.2 to the, oh, I suck. 27 minus 26 is one. Or, last but not least, all of them pass. 
pointing to the 27N, there's zero failures. Whew. All right, so sigma. Sigma means you add. So whenever you see this symbol, it means you add. You start at the bottom, you stop at the top, and you add after every time of plugging in. Okay, so I will put that up there for you guys to look at that do now. All right, let's go over these homework answers. So for number seven, you ready? Start at the bottom, stop at the top. So every ACM, I'm gonna write a one. So one squared is one. I'm do five times one squared plus four. Plus, keep going, five times two squared plus four. Plus, ready? Five times three squared plus four. What number am I stopping at? The four. Okay, so one squared is one, five times one is five, five plus four is nine. Two squared is four, four times five is 20, 20 plus four is 24. Three squared is nine, nine times five is 45, 45 and four is 49. Four squared is 16, 16 times five is 80, 80 plus four is 84. Put it all together and what do you get? That didn't come out right. 166. Let's check it. If you did download the calculator, you can do math zero. I'm gonna go from x equals one to four, and I'm gonna do five x squared plus four. And there it is, 166, okay? Number eight, tricky, tricky. So, so far I've started at ones for all of them. Now I'm starting at four and stopping at nine, okay? So 20 minus four squared plus 20 minus five squared plus 20 minus six squared plus 20 minus seven squared plus 20 minus eight squared plus 20 minus nine squared, holy cannolis. Okay, so 20 minus 16 is four, plus 20 minus 25 is negative five, plus 20 minus 36 is negative 16, plus 20 minus 49 is negative 29, 20 minus 64, is negative 44. And 20 minus 81 is negative 61. Put it all together. And you get something like negative 151. All right, let's throw it in uh, math zero. I have x equals four to nine of 20 minus x squared. And I got something like negative 151, we're good. All right, let's try the next ones. Holy cannolis, from one to six. Oh, this one's ugly, that was mean to me to give you. I apologize. So we have, oh, plug in one first. Start with the one and stop at six. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. One squared is one. One plus one is two over one. Remember, one squared is one. One plus one is two over one. All right, let's keep going. Two squared is four. Four plus one is five over two. Nine plus one is 10 over three. Oh, crap. Um, 17 over four. Right, one, two, three, four. And 26 over five. And six squared is 36, so 37 over six. All right, I'm not even gonna play with that. So we have two plus five halves plus 10 thirds 
plus uh, 17 fourths plus 26 uh, fifths plus 37 sixths. I'm getting 23.45, which I would accept, or 469 over 20, which is 23.45. Now, let's just do math zero, because that one's a little wiggity wiggity whack. We have x goes from one to six. We're gonna do alpha y equals one, and it's x squared plus one over x. And there it is, 469 over 20. All right, let's do this one. We're gonna go from four to nine. So I start with four, and I stop at nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Start with four, start at the bottom and work your way up, stop at the top. <clears throat> so just check again. 100 minus 4, 100 minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, minus 9. Okay, so you ready? Minus 4 is 96. Minus 5 is 95. Minus 6 is 94. Minus 7 is 93. Minus 8 is 92. And minus 9 is 91. Add that all up. And I'm getting something like 561. If I do math zero, and I go from four to nine of 100 minus X. There it is, 561. All right, two more that were homework problems due for Wednesday. We're gonna start at zero and stop at five. So, zero times zero plus two is two. Plus zero, I'm sorry, one, times one plus two is three plus two times two plus two is four plus three times three plus two is five plus four times four plus two is six and then the last one we're going to stop at five five times five plus two is seven all right so this just is zero this is three, eight, 15, 24, and 35. I'm getting 85. All right, let's check this, math zero. X goes from zero to five and we're gonna do x times x plus two and i'm getting 85 good job all right one more 100 minus k i'm gonna go from zero to four so start at zero stop at four 100 minus zero plus 100 minus one plus 100 minus two plus 100 minus three plus 100 minus 4. All right, so if you take away 0, it's 100. Take away 1, it's 99. 2 is 98. 3 is 97, and 4 is 96. Put it all together. And I'm getting something like 490. Let's just check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Math 0. X goes from... 0 to 4 of 100 minus x. And there it is, 490. Okay, so let me see, let me see. How are we doing, darlings? We're at 24 minutes. Let's do a few more, okay? We're going to go from 1 to 7. Oy, a 40 minus n squared. So we have 40 minus 1 squared plus 40 minus two squared plus 40 minus three squared. And what number do I stop at? That's right, seven, four squared plus 
40 minus 5 squared plus 40 minus 6 squared plus, and last but not least, we stop at the 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Start at the bottom, stop at the top. Now, 40 minus 1 is just 39. 40 minus 4 is 36. 40 minus 9 is 31. 40 minus 16 is 24. 40 minus 25 is 15. 40 minus 36 is 4. And 40 minus 49 is negative 9. Put it all together. And I'm getting 140. Let's check that on the calculator. So math zero. We're going to go x is from 1 to 7. So 40 minus x squared. And I'm getting something like 140. Good. All right, let's try a few more. 1 to 5. So I'm going to do 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. I start at the 1, I stop at the 5. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15. And I'm getting something like 45. Let's see if that's right. So we're going to do math zero. I'm going to go from one to five. And that's three X. And there you go, it's 45. How are we doing, darlings? We're hanging in there. All right, let's try a few more. Let's try. Let's try 15. We're going to start at 1 and stop at what? That's right, 7. So 500 minus 1 plus 500 minus 2 plus 500 minus 3. Let me do 500 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 and minus 7. So we ready? We have 499, 498, 497, this is 496, 495, 494, and 493. All right, let's put that all together. Sigma says you add 499 plus 498. I'm getting something like 3,472. Let's math zero it out. I'm going to go x equals 1 to 7 of 3x. No. What am I doing? 500 minus x. Hello. I'm getting 3,472. All right, let's do last one. Last one. 30 minus k. I'm going to go from 1 to 7. You ready? 30 minus 1 plus 30 minus 2 plus 30 minus 3 plus. What number do I stop at? That's right, 7. How do you know? Because where's the 7? 5, 6. There it is, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I stop at the 7 because you stop at the top. So here we go. 29. 28, 27, this is 26, 25, 24, and 23. 
182. All right, let's math zero it out. We're gonna go x equals one to seven again, and this time it's 30 minus x. And there it is, 182. All right, my darlings, I'm gonna save the last four for next time. But remember your homework is, let me get it out for you. This guy. One through eight. I'm gonna upload this, okay? So the first five are multiple choice. So if you have a graphing calculator, that's very easy, and then you only have to show work for the last three. So that's one through eight, my darlings, okay? Take care, brush your goddamn hair.